Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Dan Cartolicchio. I want to welcome you to Momentum Monday. I am here with my co-host, attorney Jen Garrett. Jen, how are you today? Hey, Dan. Good morning. I am doing well. I've got a different venue today. As you know, I'm out on the West Coast where I'll be for uh, many of these Momentum Monday sessions. That's actually good. How's the weather out there? It's great. It's in the 60s now. It's supposed to still be pretty hot. I'm in Orange County, so it's about, I think high is going to be upper 80s, maybe even low 90s today. Well, that's okay, because here in New Jersey, we got a little bit of a uh, Indian summer going on the last couple of days, but that's okay, because I like the warm weather. So we are here on Momentum Monday. We're here to motivate. We're here to educate. We, we're, here, we're here to inspire. We want to get you going for the week. A little bit about Jen. She's a leadership coach, speaker, author of Move the Ball. We're going to talk about chapter one. She's an army lawyer, judge, advocate general. That sounds serious to me, you know, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very serious to me. And, and, and I'm Dr. Dan. Uh, I'm a chiropractor by trade, and I am a clinical nutritionist. So let's get this up and going. Let's discuss chapter one of your book, The Pregame Show. What does that mean, The Pregame Show? Yeah, so before we get into that, one of the underlying principles within the book that I, I come back to often is I analogize you to being the quarterback. Mm -hmm. on your own life field. There's so many parallels between football, between team sports and business and life. And so I've chosen to take football and uh, use that to draw a lot of metaphors to help motivate, educate, inspire people. And so that first underlying principle is you are that quarterback of your life. And so it's really up to you to take command, take control and really move the ball. So I just want to put that out there because that's a very important foundational. Right. That is an important concept that, that we have to get out every single week, that it, it's up to you to make those decisions. It's up to you to make sure that your life is, is, is good and you're, and you're making the proper decisions. Absolutely. And even, and, and even if you don't, you learn, right? You, you, you know, yes. either you succeed or you learn at that point, right? Right. And so the pregame show is really about, it's the introduction, it's the beginning, it's the getting ready to get out there and execute. And so in that chapter, we talk about how the need to prepare is very mm -hmm. important, but also it's about this belief in yourself too, and having that confidence to be able to go execute whatever it is that you want to do. I think in this time of, of coronavirus, we've been home quite a bit mm -hmm. more. It's given us time to spend time with our family, <laughs> but it's also given us time to do some reflection and to really mm -hmm. think about what's important. And a lot of people have had to make job changes because they've been let go. And so they're thinking about, well, what's next for me? And so I think the pregame show is really an important piece of that is putting together your plan. What's next for you, whether you had to make a job change or not, reassessing kind of where you're at, what your priorities are and your goals is something all of us need to be doing on a continual basis. And it's a great time right now to do that. Yeah, I think that's very important. You're taking a look at your goals. You're, you're seeing what, what, what's working, what's, what's, what's not working. And, and kind of the new term today is pivoting, right? You know, yes. if you're, if, if you're going to pivot in, in, your, in your career. Um, I stayed in my career, but I had to pivot the way that I did business. You know, I'm doing a lot of telehealth today, whereas before I didn't do any of it. So it's mm -hmm. very important in order to take a look at that. And it took a little bit of time. You know, you have to have that self-reflection, you know, part of it and figure out what you want to do. And I had to be the quarterback. I had to throw the ball and I had to see if I was gonna complete that pass or I was gonna throw an interception. And, um, you know, in, in, our, in our offices, we've actually, you know, we've completed the pass and it's been great. It's been great. And we're gonna to continue to do that. We're gonna to continue to move the ball with telehealth right now. Absolutely. And I had to pivot as well. Prior to COVID, I was doing a lot more business consulting, uh, corporate <laughs> training, corporate speaking. And when COVID hit, that all kind of went away. And right. so I spent more of my time working with professional athletes, working with individuals, doing coaching, mm -hmm. helping a lot of people with their career. A lot of people were looking for help with just their resumes and their LinkedIn. And that's mm -hmm. something that I've been doing for a while. It wasn't a primary part of my business, but it became a significant part just as you have to you know, make some adjustments and pivot during this new normal, so to speak, and as market conditions change and, and stuff. So absolutely, you've got to be able to pivot, got to be open-minded to be able to make those adjustments as you see them uh, needing to be made. 
You know what? And I think this is important. And let's stay here for a few for for a few minutes because, you know, I remember in high school we were told, you know, the ability to handle change because life is all about change, right? It, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's a sense of uh, maturity that you're able to handle this change and you're able to pivot from one thing to the next, you know, and I'm 58 years old. So I've been through the Cold War. I've been through the dot com. I've been through, you know, 9-11. I've been through Sandy. I've been through uh, 2008. I've been through now COVID. I've been through H1N1. And every time this has happened, you had to pivot and you had to have that belief and the confidence in yourself in order to do that, right? Yes, absolutely. And I want something I want to emphasize is having the confidence doesn't mean that you don't have any doubts. What confidence, right. in my opinion, means is that you believe in your ability to mm-hmm. figure things out. And so when you look at all the successful business leaders out there, it's not like they ever doubted themselves or you know, were unsure of something, but they believed that they were going to figure it out no matter what. And that isn't something that you need to do by yourself either. You need to pull in your team, right? pull right. in your network, pull in your circle to help you navigate through these challenges. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's great. You know, pivot and, and you say, and you say in, in, in chapter one, follow your dreams you know, to yes. achieve your goals. You know, and I have this underlined here, follow your dreams and, 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 and achieve your goals, even if you have to pivot in order to make that happen. And you need team, teamwork because you need teamwork in order to be successful. You have that also, you know, in, in the same sure. chapter. You and I are on the same page because I'm reading it and, and, and I have it underlined, you know, because you need to have your team, no matter who that team is that's around you. Could be family, could be your could be your business partners, and so forth. Isn't that isn't that important to have that teamwork? Absolutely, and it's not just about having people that are cheering you on. It's great to have a support network. That's absolutely important. But you also want to have people on your team that have done what you're looking to do, that have those experiences that can give you mm-hmm. guidance, help you from making some you know common mistakes, as an example, accelerate your progress. Right. So I would encourage people to think about who's in my circle. And if I'm doing something, I don't have the right team in terms of people with experience that can get me to where I want to go. How can I start adding those people to my roster, so to speak? And how do you find them? LinkedIn as is a great way. You and I connected through LinkedIn. Right. It's a fantastic place to make new friendships, to build your network and to gain uh, relationships with people that have the experiences that you are looking for to help you kind of grow your business or just achieve your goals. And I think, I think that's important. You know, you know, social media can be a very powerful tool to help out. You know, you and I were friends on, on, you know, LinkedIn, we conversed every now and again, all of a sudden it's like, okay, we're doing a podcast. Now we're doing a weekly segment to help people out. And you never know who that individual is that's going to be do that. Now, the other thing you say in, in, in the first chapter, and I, and I underlined this a hundred times, I wasn't going to let anyone or anything stop me. That comes from the confidence. Talk about yes. that. I think that's very important. Absolutely. I'm a very stubborn person and that can be good <laughs> and bad, right? <laughs> right, right, but, right. But you have to kind of be stubborn when it comes to following your dreams. You have to allow yourself the courage to keep pushing forward, even when people tell you no. You know, I have a podcast as well, Move the Ball, and that's something that I talk with a lot of business leaders on the show about when they were in their early stages of entrepreneurship, as an example. They talk about mm-hmm. you, you have to get to the no's or get a lot of no's before you get to the yeses. And there right. are going to be people that are going to tell you no in business. There are people that are going to tell you no, you can't do something. And you have to just you know have that to determination to continue to move forward if this goal is something that you are really passionate about you Mm -hmm. have to keep moving forward. And I'll just give a quick example. So you've obviously mentioned my book, Move the Ball. I published that book back in 2013, initially, second edition in 2018. Mm -hmm. And when I published the book, I didn't know a single person that played professional football, that coached. All I was was a girl from Chicago that watched (laughs) Chicago Bears football in the 80s, fell in love with it as a kid. And I followed the game ever since and took away all these lessons. Anyway, so I published the book and 
when I, I tried to connect with people in the sports world, I was not taken seriously. Mm-hmm. People were very, very professional. They weren't rude, but they just discounted you. They didn't think that, okay, great. You're a fan. You think you know something about football. Awesome. Right. They didn't say that to my face, but that's kind of what uh, right. you knew that that's what they were thinking. And I actually had someone that uh, whose family owned a team at the time, a woman, tell me that she's like, I think you're wasting your time. These guys don't care what you have to say. You should go focus on something else. So I had a choice. I could have listened to things like that, or I could say, okay, thank you for your input. And I'm going to keep doing me and I'm going to keep moving forward. And so, you know, now I work with professional athletes on a weekly basis. People seek me out. It's not like I'm, you know, trolling LinkedIn, trying to, you know, get leads and and, and people have have recognized my work over time because I've just stayed true to, to what my purpose is. And I I think that's so important. Is there going to be people that are intentionally going to tell you, no, because they just don't think it's a good idea or they think they're trying to protect you because they don't want to see you fail. Right. And so right. you have to just kind of take those inputs and then really assess what's important to you. And do you want to keep moving forward or is there something else you want to go do? That's right. And, and I think this is important because in your chapter, you talk about being committed and wanting something and you need to move forward with that. Hence, move the ball. Yes. And there are those, and you also mentioned this in the chapter, and I have this underlined a, a thousand times, because if you want to move the ball, and let's say you want to be an entrepreneur, or if you want to be a business person, or you know, you, you, you want to do something, you want to open up a business, maybe you want to go back to school, right? You know, here, here, here you are, you know, five children, and you're going to law school full time, you know, I, I, here I am coming from an immigrant family. And, you know, you know, I'm just, I just wanted something. I wanted something. I wanted to move that ball. But in doing so, and this is important, okay? I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, but those, you, you have those critics and you talk about critics in the book. How yes. do you deal with those critics? Yeah, so again, you have that choice to either listen to the critics or you have the choice to move forward and say, okay, I hear these critics, but I'm not going to let them deter or detract me from what Mm -hmm. I'm doing. And there are two things that you can do. One, like some people, like I mentioned before, they're not trying to be mean or hurtful. They really just want what's best for you. And they think that they are trying to help by telling you not to pursue something. So you can either, you just push them to the sideline is what I say. And you just keep Mm -hmm. moving forward. There are some people that are so toxic in your Mm. life that sometimes it's time to sever ties. And I think going through this pandemic, we've seen some of those people kind of manifest uh, themselves even more in social media and negativity. And you can see who is really putting negative energy out there so much that maybe it's time to just cut those ties completely. Right. I think that's, I think that's very important. You know, you could be on a football team and, and the coach more than likely is going to say, you know what, this guy is toxic in the locker room. He's toxic on the field. She's not doing what she's supposed to do. She's over here doing whatever. And they're going to get cut from the yes. team. And they're not going to be, you know, you know, it, it's one of those situations where, you know, oh, you know, I can't, I can't find a job now because I'm just become so toxic doing that. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the Dallas Cowboys. They hated Dallas Cowboys. I'm a Giants fan. You're a Bears <laughs> fan. You know, we hate we hate the Cowboys, but you also say in your book now, listen, I'm reading this and I can probably quote from every page. You give credit where credit is due and you do that in sports all the time. You know, during during the Super Bowl years, you know, they were persistent. They executed. They had a lot of teamwork. They did play very well. And this goes to, I think, the main theme of this chapter. And you have it at the end. Planning, acting, and believing. Talk about the planning. Talk about the acting. Talk about the believing. Absolutely. And so just, I just have to say, I do not hate the Cowboys like you might hate them. They're not in my conference. (laughs) And and I did enjoy the, you know, the Deion Sanders, Emmett Smith days. Those were some really good days of football. Uh, They weren't weren't really that good. (laughs) (laughs) As a matter of Um, fact, they were, they, they, they were horrible, Jen. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, you mentioned the planning, the acting, believing. And so it's important. You have to have a plan. 
you got to put together what is your playbook going to be. Now, it's important to know that's not always going to go as planned, but we'll talk about that. We'll be talking about more of that uh, in other uh, videos. In assuming sessions. weeks. I, I think we're going to yes. touch upon that next, next week. We're going to stay here in chapter yes. one because chapter one is very important. Yeah, and so the planning is put your plan together. If you were a business, you'd have a plan, right? You need to have a plan for your life as well. You can't just uh, survive the day to day, but you need to be strategic with what it is you want to do from a career standpoint. If you're a business owner, you obviously understand that part too, but also just from a personal goal standpoint, we should all have goals outside of career and work and financial mm -hmm. stuff. So what are those things for you mm -hmm. and what's your plan to achieve them? So that's the first part. The acting part is all about the execution. You've got to execute that playbook, that plan, mm -hmm. so that you can make that progress and then get yourself across the goal line. Mm -hmm. And then the believing we talked about before, it's that confidence. It's that knowing that you can get through anything that comes in your path. It may be difficult. It may bring you lots of headaches, but just stick mm -hmm. with it and knowing that right. you're going to get through it. Yeah, you know what? And I think that what I was trying to say before is that when you go through life and you get experience and, and it's it, it also to what you were saying and you and you seek those individuals out that have that experience in getting through and you want to you want to align yourself with those types of individuals you know here 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 in our town they've uh, asked me to be part of a, a business development you know because of covid you know and it's just like a seasoned quarterback I have, and you have that been there, done that attitude. You can see that mm -hmm. in us. You know, we can, we can, we can move the ball. We know what to do. And I think that's part of our theme here in helping out individuals is because you and I do have a lot of experience together. And so what happens is that we can motivate people that momentum Monday and get them up and moving. You can do it, you know, um, hard work, you say teamwork, discipline and dedication to the cause whatever your yes. cause is, right? Absolutely. You know, yeah, that's you, great. Yeah, so, I was just gonna say, you just, you gotta stay connected to your why, you know, and be dedicated to that and go through, you've gotta go through dark times to get to the light and uh, it's okay, you know? When you look at any successful entrepreneur, they all talk about mm -hmm. the dark times, right? It wasn't all rosy and, and uh, unicorns. It was, I had to go through this. There were times that I was down to my last thousand dollars or whatever, you know? <laughs> and uh, they talk about these stories where it was, uh, and we'll talk about this in the book too, a fourth down moment. And they had to decide, am I gonna continue to go for it? Or do I give up and, and punt and do something else? And right. what did they do? They kept going. And that's the same for us. I mean, it's not, life isn't going to always be easy. And quite honestly, if life were easy, it wouldn't be as fulfilling because we need challenges. We need to feel that we can overcome things as well. Right. And you, and you mentioned that, and you mentioned that in the book and you, um, you uh, quote, and where is it right here? It's Mike Dicka, the coach of the Chicago bears. If things came easy, then everybody would be great at what they did. Let's yes. face it, but that's, that's not reality. As I've always said, my overnight success took me over three decades <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. to, to accomplish. And I think that, you know, that perseverance and that, you know, that grit stick, stick to it is very important during this time of COVID as well as any, any given time in history and, and in your life. Because you need you need to do that, and I've had my back up against the wall being an entrepreneur, and you and you go to your last penny at times. Mm -hmm. You know, as you as you become more experienced, it may not be as severe, but you can lose significant amounts of money. And what I'm trying to say is, even if you're doing that, pivot if you need to pivot, or keep yes. on with the plan if you need to keep with the plan. Whatever that is for you, and why are you doing this? Could be for you, could be for your family, could be for a combination of many different reasons, right? You know, for me, a why for me is I have a 12 year old and I wanna show him that, listen, you can dream. And if you plan, you execute, you put that into action, your dreams can come true no matter what they are. I sound like a Disney commercial right now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> But but it's but it's very true. So 
Jen, tell me, last last pearl for the uh, for the uh, Monday morning. What's on your mind? You know, it's Monday. This is the last week in September, so we're about to close out Q3, heading into Q4 of 2020. And look, 2020 has been a year like no one has expected. But that doesn't mean that, like, I see people's posts talking about, oh, I can't wait for 2021 to come. This year's just been awful. But why? Like, you still have three more months and change of 2020. We can still make this a great year it has not been a fantastic year the first three quarters but that doesn't mean we allow it to be an excuse to just write off the rest of the year so i was thinking about this this morning was let's make every day count right and let's figure out how can we use the rest of what 2020 is going to bring us as an opportunity to make that forward progress I, I really love that and again you and i are in parallel universes even though we're on the East Coast, I'm on the East Coast and you're on the West Coast because I was thinking last night as I was prepping, planning for the week or going over what I needed to do this week, I, I decided to go for it even more because I said, you know what, to sit back and to let everything that's happened in 2020 to stop me, that's not who I am and that's not where I want to be. So it was up to midnight last night replanning and replanning again and replanning again. And I think that's important for all of our listeners that you have three months of 2020. You can really make it happen in these three months that you have left. So again, move the ball. This is a great book. I'm reading it and I'm going along with everybody. So listen, everybody get the book so that when you're listening to us, you can, you can ask questions. All right. And you can make comments on this book. It's a great book. Uh, Jen, where can they get the book? Yeah, the book is on Amazon in paperback as well as Kindle version. And then also through Amazon, you can get the ebook um, through Audible and then iTunes as well. And where can they contact you? Yeah, so if you want, you can go to my website. You can also find me on LinkedIn. If you just uh, search the hashtag move the ball, you can, uh, I should pop up, I hope. And, uh, <laughs> and if you want, send me an email at info at jenniferagarrett.com. That's info, I-N-F-O at J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R-A-G-A-R-R-E-T-T.com. And we'll have that in the show notes. I'm Dr. Dan. You can contact me at suburbanwellnessgroup.com. And I have a podcast. Go to YouTube and it's Suburban Wellness Group. Uh, Jen and I are really enjoying our, our Momentum Mondays and, and we're going to continue on with these. So get the book again, move the ball, come along with us, come along with the journey. Jen, thank you very much for getting up early today on the West Coast to keep our 930 Eastern Standard Time going. And I appreciate you. Uh, it's it's been it, it, it's truly an honor and privilege to you know to uh, do these Mondays with you and everybody next Monday Eastern Standard Time. Jen, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dan. It's been great chatting today. I'm having a lot of fun with these things, and I hope those watching are really getting a lot of value. That's why we decided to do these right. is to really motivate, educate, and inspire. And remember that you're not alone. No matter That's what right. you're going through, you know, we're here to champion you on. We believe in you and uh, you really 100%. can do anything. So, you know, follow your dreams, especially during this time. Figure out what that is. Make your plan and then go act on it. Go get them. All right, everybody. Have a great week. Go for it. Don't wait. Plan, execute, do the whole thing. And we will see you next week. Take care, Jen. Bye, everyone.